the interesting thing is going to be the rock shows uh, for next year. Uh, we've got several, and not classic rock, you know, more... Uh, <gasps> What? More Paul, hard rock. did you just uh, say that? Got a Modern? Couple, yeah, there's actually, oh. what, two, 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 maybe three metal shows in there. Hold on, Paul. Let's say that slower. <laughs> three metal shows next year? Yeah. Well, oh. I mean, you know, it's... That's it, awesome. It, it's in the works, so, you know. Oh. We still got to uh, get some of the agree to come here. So. Hey, yeah. hey, metal fans, did you hear that? <laughs> well, well, that's one thing that... Uh, um, Josh brought up right before we hopped on air that I wanted to touch on because I see a lot of these comments on y'all's pages is like why can't you have Lord certain heavens. acts coming to the arena? Why well, can't I'm, you get Taylor Swift? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like for the people Sorry. that don't understand why you can't get Taylor Swift, kind of explain well, that to them. Okay. Well, Taylor Swift, the the, the it comes down to the number of seats you have. Uh, oh, you know, her poll star yeah. average is probably somewhere in the fifteen to seventeen thousand range. We yeah. hold fifty five hundred in a reserve seat setting. Yeah, so it, it should, it should be common sense to yeah, people. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I don't think honestly most of the public even understands how concerts work. You know, they just mm-hmm. know that people tour. You got a building. You know, it's it's uh you know field of dreams. You build it, they come. Why don't they there? So yeah, I mean, but there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, even shows that we're doing, you know, they look at ticket sales. You know, their Polestar tracks every show out there, every box office report sales. And so, you know, if we got a tour that's averaging, you know, take Jamie Johnson. Let's say that tour with Whiskey Myers is averaging, you know, forty five hundred ticket sales, and we only sell twenty five hundred. Well, obviously, you know, other people see that, and that hurts, you know what show may be coming down that pike because uh, they just think the market can't sell. Mm-hmm. Uh, as to where we may know, well, no, you know, unfortunately we booked uh, a show during something else going on and that's what hurt the sales. But, you know, it's a lot of things that go into it that decide mm-hmm. whether or not a show, uh, you know, because, uh, you, you know, the major agencies, you know, you got uh, William Morris, you got CAA, you got uh, Artists International, ITA, mm-hmm. UTA, all of those guys. And I mean, so, you know, an agency, you know, like William Morris is probably the largest agency out there. So just in Nashville, there's probably 500 country artists that are signed with, with William Morris. Wow. And so that's it. If we got a country show with, you know, somebody that's a William Morris and they see those numbers, yeah, they're going to be a little hesitant to, to mm. book something else down the road. So it's, it's really like mm. going back to square one, starting over again and, and trying to build a... Are, are there things that the fans can do here around the area to help the buy arena? Tickets. I mean that's Don't it's wait. still it's still the the number one thing buy tickets buy them early buy yeah. them in advance and, and Don't do buy this tickets. last minute stuff because yeah. that does hurt buy. a little bit that makes pr- promoters nervous because you know every you know there's you know in the perfect world there's always these formulas that tell you what you're going to do so you know if you you got a show that goes on sale and the opening week sells you know forty five percent of the tickets you got a pretty good idea what it's going to do but here it's a little different because we're what we're called in Nashville and other places is a delayed market. Mm-hmm. So they say the ticket sales doesn't happen until it gets closer to the show. So that makes a promoter nervous because he's looking at it going, oh, crap, they only sold 20% of their tickets in opening week. You know, So he's sitting there thinking, man, we're going to end up with about 48% sold, and then he turns around and it ends up being 68%. Yeah. So you know, it makes them a little nervous, but you know, we, we work through it. But that's the secret to it, just buy tickets. Buy uh, tickets early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know a ton of people that wait till the last minute. Stop it! it. Yeah, and, and I tell them like you're you're basically screwing yourself out of some really good seats. Well, it makes it well, that too. I mean, you know, I mean, there's not any really bad seats there. No, but, but the the but, where it hurts you is is being able to announce the next show. You know, because you know, usually a tour you give them like two weeks. So you've announced a show, it's went on sale for two weeks, and then you announce something else. Here we have to delay those announcements because we can't, you know, we got to give this show time to sell to a certain point before we throw something else out there. It's kind of like, you know, the REO Alice Cooper. You know, we, we, we announced Alice Cooper first, or he announced his tour before REO. Yeah. And even though REO's first, uh, we had to let Alice Cooper play out a couple weeks to get ticket sales to a certain point because mm-hmm. that's, that's your big sales. You know, you, you're going to sell a lot when it's announced or goes on sale. And then you're going to sell a lot the week of. So you want to give it two weeks, and then then we were able to get REO out there. Um, but, you know, like REO, we would have probably in, – in, I think we ended up being three or four weeks after Alice Cooper was announced before we got REO out there. Yeah. We had to give Alice a little bit more time to sell. 
Yeah, uh, but, that, but that Aria show, man, that's going to be awesome. And having Kip Winger as the opener, yeah. like man, seventeen. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. <laughs> so, so it, that's another cool thing that y'all have been doing with these concerts, just like the Jamie Johnson Whiskey Myers. Like the opening act is just as good. Yeah, as I mean, the well, it helps sell tickets. So that's what you're trying to do is uh, put somebody on there. You know, one that's fairly cheap and hopefully can push some ticket sales. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, you take Jamie Johnson. If you do just a Jamie Johnson show, you probably sell, yeah, maybe 2,000 tickets. Now you throw a Whiskey Myers on it, and we sell 3,700 tickets. And so, you know, 3,700 you know, times you know, ticket average price of $56 versus 2,000, it's a, it's a heck of a lot better day. That GM mindset, man. You well, see, he kind of lost his glasses on. He starts doing his little little scientist experiments with his how he's going to sell his tickets. He's like, oh, this, this, watch how this happens here and this happens here, and I guarantee we're going to have this number. And then when he has that number, you're like, yeah, they get mad when I guess because you know they all they, you know everybody wants to be optimistic. Like, so really, we'll, we'll book a show and they'll go, oh, it'll sell four thousand. Oh, it'll sell this, and I go, that's ah, it's going to be about twenty eight hundred. It's <laughs> such. <laughs> I'd heard. Uh, or realist. I mean, or, you know. Yeah. Well, it's just 30 years of watching ticket sales. <laughs> so, you know. Have you been doing this 30 years? Uh, 32. Going on 33 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm an original arena rat. I started out, you know, arena sweeping rat. floors. And, I like that. Yeah. Really yeah that's rat. what we're called. Arena rats. Paul's, Paul's been in the business as old as I am. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. 